welcome to oral pathology sessions we are discussing about forensic odontology in a previous video we have discussed about the basics of forensic odontology and the comparative anti-mortem and post-mortem analysis of uh, in forensic odontology now uh, in this video we are going to discuss about a small topic that is the age estimation in forensic odontology how the dental age is estimated using Forensic Odontology. This is a, a repeatedly asked uh, short essay based question in your university examination. Now let's see what's there in your uh, dental age estimation. So here as uh, we start with the table of content, we'll start with introduction, uh, the dental age estimation and the dental age estimation for each age group. For prenatal, neonatal and early postnatal period, we use one method and for children and adolescents, we use a certain methods. For adults, we use certain methods. So, this is how we are going to learn. Okay, for prenatal, uh, the neonatal and early postnatal period, uh, there is a method for dental age estimation. For children and adolescents, we use three methods there is the score and Maslow method and damage run method and the third molar method okay so these are the three methods show and Maslow, uh, the damage run method and the, the third molar method now in adult we use uh, the gustafson method and dentin translucency method okay so these are certain names of the methods we are using in specific age groups for dental identification now what is dental age estimation uh, it is a step in dental profiling means to profile to find out the profile of a person okay to find out the dental profile of a person it is necessary to identify his chronological age okay which age group he is belonging so that is called dental age estimation so it is there in uh, in post-mortem identification and your anti-mortem identification we can use this dental age estimation and it can be used in a person with no dental record no um, uh, what uh, evidence of his age okay no uh, no record of his age okay imagine it is not only used for your your postmortem it is not only used for your dental profiling it can be used in a person with no uh, government records a person coming without he doesn't have any government proof to prove his age okay in such person a forensic odontologist can help him to find his age okay or his age group so that he can get a government record of his age group okay so that is also a, a benefit of having dental age estimation now what are the different dental age estimation methods we can use morphology of the tooth we can use radiographs we can use histological methods and sometimes we can use biochemical methods also so there are three phases of a development that is first one is your prenatal period till the postnatal period next is your child and adolescent age group and the adult so in each age group we are using different techniques okay now as uh, we first start with the prenatal neonatal and uh, postnatal period you can use your chronology okay the primary teeth which will initially calcify in the 12 to 14 weeks of intrauterine life okay and the enamel is completed by the first year of age so you can examine the person you can examine the uh, uh, autopsy in the autopsy you can examine this and you can identify the age of this primary teeth or presence of this uh, primary teeth you can identify the age of the person whether this child completed one year or not okay whether this child is completed one year or not the permanent teeth the first molar calcification begin by birth okay so if the first molar calcification is seen can say that the child is just born or newborn okay this is how you can use the uh, uh, odontology to identify the uh, age okay now coming to children and adolescent okay so here what you can use you can use a chronological chart okay the dental chronological chart you can use the eruption and the tooth calcification time period to identify the age of the child okay you can uh, see the calcification how much amount of tooth is calcified using a radiograph so in this we are using certain techniques okay three techniques that is a uh, sholan maslow method demigeran methods and third molar estimation method now let's see each what you see in shoal and master method what are you doing in shoal and master method uh, this method divides the tooth developed into 20 stages okay 
there is 20 chronological stages of tooth development starting from 5 months to 21 years. Okay, so we have 20 stages. Okay, starting from 5 months to 21 years. And there is a chart. So what you have to do is take the photograph, take the radiograph and compare it with the chart. So this is the chart. Can you see? So you take the radiograph of the person and you compare it with the chart. Okay. In which chart it is balancing, it is uh, we, we, we see the, in which chart it is matching and we ap approximately say the age. Okay, eight years. Okay, eight years. What is the what is the speciality of that eight years? Okay, can you see in this picture? Can you see in that picture you have equal number of primary and permanent teeth? The ash ash uh, this is your primary teeth, and these are your permanent teeth, right? Okay, so can you see in this by the time of eight years of age? Okay, you have totally six primary teeth and six permanent teeth on one side. Okay, so total you have 12, 12. You have 12 primary teeth and 12 permanent teeth, eight years of age. Okay, interesting. So that's how you can compare the radiograph. You can compare the dentition status of the child with the 20 stages. You, there is 20 stages here. Okay, uh, 4, 8, uh, 12, 16, 20. Here 20 stages is starting from uh, 5 months to uh, 21 years. Okay, 21 years of age and that uh, we compare it with this and we can identify the age. So this is how Shore and Maxwell method works. Now what about Demigrant's method? Demigrant method does not require all the tooth. Okay, they are just using mandibular left side teeth. Okay, the left mandibular teeth, they are using the teeth from the left mandibular region and that teeth is used to identify the age and it is used for children and adolescents and they are using the radiographic method of calcification. How much calcification is there? They are taking the radiographs. Okay, and it is divided into 10 stages. Okay, 0 to 9. Now you can see, you can see this. They are taking the uh, molars, premolars, canines and incisors on the left mandibular region. And it is divided into 10 stages. 0 to 9. It is divided into 10 stages. And you take a radiograph and you cross check which, which stage of development it is. Okay, in which stage of development it is. And you are comparing with that uh, stage of development and you are identifying the age of the person okay you are comparing the uh, with the standard chart and identifying the age okay now uh, we are having a formula here okay now in the measurement methods you compare it with with it and you give a number and you apply that in the formula and you find the what age the, the equation for the, uh, the formula is not that important but you should know that the measurement methods use the mandibular left side too and they each score is given from 0 to 9 and the score is added okay and the, all the scores are added and to get a, a formula total maturity score and this total maturity score is put in this equation and the age is found out okay only that now coming to the third molar estimation what is there in the third molar estimation it is mainly used in the uh, 16 to 22 year old age group but it is not that commonly used it is very much variable so it is not used because uh, each individual has different time of eruption of the third molar so with the third molar eruption we cannot find out a proper age okay in some person the third molar will be erupting very fast in some person it will be impacted itself it is not erupting so that is not a good method of estimation so the best uh, two methods of estimation age estimation in children and adolescent is here one is your shoran masler method second one is your dimension methods now let's see what about adults okay in adult the estimation is very much challenging because the adult uh, the tooth is subjected to very wear and tear the adult has traumas okay so the tooth will be in a very bad state okay it will be changing okay not like your children or adolescent in adolescent or children the tooth is erupting and coming to the oral cavity so till that tooth is okay but in adult due to the habits or due to the trauma or due to any of the habits every adult have a different type of tooth right so it is very challenging and the methods we use here is the 
Gustafson method or Dendin transfluorescence method. Both methods we can use. Now let's see what's there in Gustafson method. What are the parameters they use in Gustafson method? Gustafson method uses the regressive changes in the tooth. Okay. They are based on the morphological and histological age related changes in the tooth. How much uh, age related changes has come in the tooth? Based on that, they are telling the age. Now, what are the age related changes? Attrition. How much the tooth is attreated? How much secondary dentin is deposited? How much periodontal ligament is lost? Okay. Cementum and apposition. Cement, how much cementum is apposited on the apex? How much root is resorbed? And how much dentin translucency is there? So, attrition, secondary dentin deposition, periodontal ligament loss, cemental opposition, your root resorption, and your dentin translucency. So, these parameters. Okay are in Gustafson's method. So these parameters are checked. They are given a value and that value is put in an equation and then age is identified. Okay, the equations and all not important, but at least you should know what are the parameters they are taking in Gustafson method. Okay, so this is uh, how you see. Okay, they are uh, seeing the attrition, how much the tooth is attrited. Okay, how much uh, the, the cementum is deposited. How much the dentin is having uh, translucency? Okay, so all these uh, features are checked. Now, next method is a dentin translucency method. So, what is dentin translucency? Okay, as the age increases, as the patient, as the person goes from his young age to the middle age to the old age, the translucency of the dentin is, is what, what happens in translucency increases okay so the root dentin become translucent from the third decade from after the age of 30 after your age of 30 it is becoming more and more translucent so how much translucent it is with that we can identify the age okay so it is measured from the apex to the cj from, from a root if we are taking the root dentin okay yeah, we have the root dentin here from the apex to the cemento enamel junction how much a dentin translucency is there okay that is measured the level of translucency is measured till here or till here that level is measured and that translucency is used to identify the identify the age okay so length of the translucency is measured okay so it is measured from the apex to the from the apex it is measured upward and that measurement is used in formulas to find the age okay that formula is not that important but can you see can you see in this picture a 37 year old person the translucency is only till here in 50 years the translucency has gone from here to here in 64 years you can see the translucency has gone till here okay so the translucency this is a translucent white dentin you are seeing okay translucency it is looking glassy like translucent so that's uh, a, about your dental age estimation so dental age estimation you should when they ask it has a short essay what you should write is about the introduction and uh, basic features basic nature of this dental age estimation why it is good and uh, about the dental age estimation in different age groups okay how it is used in prenatal and postnatal period how it is used in children and adolescents, the Shore and Masler method, the Demijurans method, the third molar estimation method, and in adult, what are the methods? The Gustafson method, the Dendin translucency method. Forget about the equation. If you are very good in the memorizing the equations, well and good, you can remember equations. But still, without any equations also, if you know that what are the things being checked there, okay, that is well enough for your exam. Okay, if you are uh, if you are thorough with uh, the these factors, you can write uh, the uh, question on dental age examination. So this is how you should prepare for an answer regarding your dental age examination. Thank you.